It's really important for parents, both parents, to prioritize their self-care. Basically, as parents, we're running the show. So if we're not in a good place, everything's going to fall apart. Before I launch into four suggestions of things that I've done and my wife does to keep us on a fairly even keel, I think it's important to try and define what self-care is. Everyone will have a slightly different idea of what self-care is, but it's basically the idea that your mental health is as important as your physical health. We are living in unprecedentedly, is that a word? Unprecedented. We're living through very stressful times. Every week, what we spend on a weekly shop seems to get less and less. How is that 72 pounds worth of shopping? Which means we have to work more and more, which means we have less time for self-care, we're potentially more stressed. Yeah, it's not easy to put a positive spin on that. So for me, mental wellness isn't necessarily bubble baths and candles. I find I just get a bit hot and sweaty. It's just having some time where I'm not a dad, where I'm not a husband. I mean, I am those things. When I'm not focused on those things, I'm focused on myself. Which when you're a mum or dad often seems like a massive indulgence, but it really isn't. If we're not working, then the family dynamic isn't really going to work. So my first suggestion would be actually define what self-care means to you. Because if self-care is cleaning the house or wallpapering the downstairs toilet or doing chores with your kids, basically doing stuff for other people, then I think you need to reevaluate it. What would you do if you had a day to yourself? I know exactly what I'd do if I had a day to myself. I'd probably wake up naturally about seven o'clock without a hangover and therefore without any anxiety. I'd have a cold shower while probably pretending it's 1992. Say hello to the dog. Morning. And spend 20 to 30 very indulgent minutes probably fiddling around with YouTube thumbnails or titles or replying to comments. I'll then do some of my podcast or editing work and then take the dog for a walk. I'll then come back and do 20 or 30 minutes of meditation in the garden. And in the evening, if it was my turn, I'd go to a jiu-jitsu class. And if my mate was training, I'd probably treat him to a beer if I'd walked to training, or a non-alcoholic Guinness. It tastes exactly the same, doesn't it? When have you been drinking Guinness? And that basically would be a pretty, pretty self-indulgent, chill day for me. So my suggestion would be spend some time now jotting down your perfect day. I have five musts, five things that I do every day to keep my mental health, which is a bit of an unknown quantity, on an even keel. I have a cold shower every day. I take the dog for a walk every day. I meditate every day. I do some sort of exercise every day, whether that's some weight training or jujitsu class. And I do something creative, be that record a video or a podcast. And I do it every day. And not only is it pushing my aspirations, just keeping things sorted. I've struggled with my mental health on and off for years. I've been on medication for the past decade, but I found that by finding some coping strategies, and actually making my self-care a priority, or just equally as important as everyone else's, I feel like I'm in a good place. So my second suggestion for parents on looking after your self-care is looking after your physical health. I think it was the Romans who said, it might have been the Greeks, I think it was the Romans who said, a healthy body is a healthy mind. And there's a reason that a number of the things I try and do every day are physical. Going outside for a walk with the dog, apart from the fact that it's much cheaper than the therapist. I haven't sent you this month's invoice yet. It's just really good for your head. Walking is said to be one of the best exercises you can do, especially getting out in nature. We're lucky enough to live on the South Downs, so we have the sea in front of us and some beautiful countryside behind us. Apparently just being surrounded by nature is really good for your mental health. And fresh air and exercise, not to mention very cheap and free therapy with your dog, is a really good idea. One of the main problems I think as a parent is that you produce these little people that you love so much that you actually feel quite guilty if you don't spend all your time and all your money and all your energy on them. The problem with that is that in order to give them the best childhood you can, the best lifestyle you can, you have to be performing in an optimum physical and mental place. If you're knackered because you never give yourself any time, if you're stressed out because you basically just feel like you're going from one job to another job, just putting out fire after fire, it's not going to be if you have a breakdown, it's when you have a breakdown. I'm a big fan of TED Talks, and one of my favorite TED Talks is by a man called Simon Sinek. I thought he said he was your favorite. I don't even know his name. One of his videos popped up on my feed a couple of days ago. Apparently, the three most important muscles to predict longevity and a happy and healthy life. Firstly, your heart, well, that's obvious. If the pump's not working, you're not working. Two, the lungs, obviously, you need air, can't survive without oxygen. But the third one really surprised me. 
apparently the third most influential muscle group is your thighs. This is because it's your thighs that can get you up and get you out and get you moving. Without your thigh muscles, you can't stand up, you can't move around, you can't get outside, you can't go and meet your friends. You're basically stuck and sedentary. And human beings who can't move around because they're sedentary are more likely to have less happy lives. Now, the reason I suggested initially define what self-care is for you. It's really important that when you do some exercise, you actually do something you really want to do, as opposed to what you were made to do at school, what your best friend's doing, what's currently trendy at the moment. It can be walking, it can be roller skating. It just has to be something you generally want to do. For some reason, I have a real desire to be beaten up and choked out by sweaty Brazilian men. I'm sure a therapist would have a field day with that. Don't worry, the invoice is on its way. And instead of getting disheartened that you might not know what exercise or activity you want, enjoy the process. Go and do some dance classes. Go swimming. Go and try Tai Chi Aqua Zumba. Apparently it is amazing. Go for a walk. You don't have to justify it to anyone else. You've just got to enjoy it and genuinely enjoy it. And don't get me wrong, there's not been one Brazilian Jiu Jitsu class that I've done for the past eight years where 10 minutes before, where I'm trying to find my rash vest or a towel, where there isn't a very strong voice in my mind going, oh, don't do this, just sit on the sofa, just eat some biscuits, just do a bit more editing. Your brain's very clever. Before you're about to go and do some exercise, it knows there could be a level of discomfort. So it's gonna do whatever it can to sabotage you, which again is why self-care is so important. Because if you've got a calm, strong mind that you're in charge of, then you can make sure that it makes the body do what you want it to do. And this leads me on to my third suggestion of things you really need to do as a parent to prioritize your self-care. Make sure you've got emotional balance. Now, my understanding of emotional balance is prioritizing seeing your friends. I was diagnosed with having OCD in 2010. And one of the symptoms of my OCD is intrusive thoughts. Basically, I'll get an idea about something I worried I might have done or what I might have said and the potentially negative implications. Well, if I never go out and talk to any of my friends or spend any time with everyone else, those intrusive thoughts just have free reign just to take over my mind. It's really important to connect with our friends. Yes, it's important to look after our children. Yes, it's important to make sure their needs are met, but we have to make sure our needs are met too. It's as important for me to hang out with the other 40, 50 year old dad who might also be worried about money, who might also be struggling to get their kids to go to bed, who might also have just had an argument with their missus. Talking to other people, of a similar age and situation makes you feel you're not alone. It never takes the problems away, but it always makes me feel better about them. A positive perspective on life, in particular your life, is worth its weight in gold. And my fourth and final suggestion of things that you need to do in order to prioritize your self-care as a parent, and that's you need to set and stick to some healthy boundaries. The saying, if you want something done, ask a busy person, is never more true than when you become a parent. I know full well that if I sit too long in one space, looking quite relaxed and calm, my wife or children will find something for me to do for them. And that's totally fine. But I need to make sure that I set the boundaries that if I have something planned for my mental or physical health and it's my turn, and I haven't got any other priorities or responsibilities, then I stick to them. And as a happily married father of three, oh, excuse me. Four, if you count the dog, I can tell you the one thing you will have to do on a daily basis is work hard to protect those boundaries at all costs. I know that on a Monday and a Wednesday night, I am doing dinner and bath time and bed for the kids because my wife is out doing Tai Chi Aqua Zumba. She's going to get cross if you take the piss. She never watches these videos, it's fine. On a Monday and a Wednesday, my wife is out doing her exercise. She's off somewhere in the wilds of Sussex doing some trail running, which is really important because as she would probably say for me, the version of my wife that walks in through the door after an hour of boxing or after an hour of trail running or after an hour's long walk with the dog is a completely different human being. She's centered, she's happy, she's energized. So it's really important for me not just to support her with that, but also defend her boundaries. When the kids say, where's mummy? I want a cuddle with mummy. I have to explain to them why that's important for her. And the same goes that on a Tuesday and a Thursday, my wife knows she will be doing supper, bath time and bed because I'll be rolling around trying not to get strangled by sweaty men or doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I thought you'd like that. 
Your partner will actually respect you more if you say no to things. There's nothing less attractive than someone who just says yes to everyone. No one wants to be married to a doormat. And it's not just in your family and your relationship you need to set and defend boundaries. It's at work. Make sure that your boss knows that at a certain time, you're not working anymore. It doesn't matter how important he thinks it is to change column X, Y, and Z to yellow from blue in that spreadsheet. It can wait till tomorrow because you're finished working and you're working on you. If someone's paying you to do something, it doesn't matter how much you do, it will never be enough. They will always want a little bit more. But when you start a new job or start a new relationship and you set up some boundaries and you stick to them, it will become the norm. And your behavior won't seem unhelpful or uncommitted. It'll just be your behavior. And a bit of tip to earn some serious brownie points. Even if you are genuinely not interested, how many steps your wife has done today, take an interest. If she comes through the door having just done a walk or a class, ask her how it was. When she asks me how jiu-jitsu was, I know full well she's not really that interested, but she's making an effort and I appreciate that. We've been married for over 10 years and when it comes to relationships, it's about consistently doing the little stuff. And a final tip of something I always tend to do, which just helps my head at the end of the day, irrespective of how stressful that day was, how much of a nightmare bedtime and bath time was, how many issues you had at work, before I drift off to sleep, I try and list 10 things that I'm grateful for. I'm pretty sure there'll be other 40-year-old dads out there who may be watching this muttering and rolling their eyes at yet another reference to gratitude being the be-all and end-all. The problem is, it does really help. I'm about as cynical as the next man, if the next man's a very cynical man. And the first five things I'm grateful for, even if they didn't ask me how jujitsu was, and even if they made the day very stressful, the things I'm grateful for is my wife and my three children. Ah, oh, excuse me. And our lovely dog. And that we have a roof over our heads. And that we have enough food in the fridge at the moment. That I have a job. That my wife has a job. That everyone in the family is mostly on good terms with each other. Once you start realizing what you're grateful for and you do it every night, irrespective of how tough your day's been, it does make me realize, actually, I'm pretty lucky. And that's training my brain to have a more positive, optimistic mindset and outlook on life, which is a really valuable thing to have, especially in tough times like we're living through now. I really hope you got some from this video. And if you like what I'm trying to do to support other parents, please share it with someone and maybe even think about subscribing. Worst case scenario, if I start annoying you after a month, you can always unsubscribe. That's what I did. Right, wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take care.